Hey there, friends. Remember the controversial story that came up about the Little Rock Airport director who was gunned down in his own home? And there was a whole lot of question marks surrounding about, okay, what really happened? Um, did they knock and then he attacked them? And then they returned fire, shot him in the head. A little bit more information has come out, and I believe we know what the story really is now. First, guys, go check out my friends, Mission First Tactical. That's Mission First Tactical. These guys have some incredible stuff. Personally, my favorite is a new Acro CCW bags. These bags are freaking awesome. They have a very subtle look to them. They don't have an overly tactical appeal to them. So even if you are carrying, it's not going to make you stand out, if you know what I mean. They also have their brand new translucent EXD magazines. These things are unbelievable. A little bit more detail on those in a future video you'll have coming up from me. And also backup iron sights. These are some legitimate backup iron sights. These are metal, not those cheap plastic ones that you see from some of the guys out there. And then they have tons of other things like gun parts and holsters. Check them out. MissionFirstTactical.com. Again, MissionFirstTactical.com. Use my discount code FTATF. Again, my world famous discount code of FTATF will get you money off at the time of checkout. All right, friends, you guys remember the story of the Arkansas director over at the Little Rock Airport who was killed in what they called at the time a shootout. And this shootout was, quote, under investigation. I want to point out some things that I pointed out in my original video at the time. If you look at the application for the search warrant, you'll notice the top three boxes under where it says the basis for the search under and then it says evidence of a crime, contraband fruits of crime or other items illegally possessed, property designed for use, intended for use, or used in committing crime. And the fourth bullet, which is not checked, a person to be arrested or a person who is unlawfully restrained. Meaning that when they were going here, this person was not meant to be arrested. Now, what does that tell you? Well, clearly... It was suspicion of a crime. Now, I understand that they have some pretty good proof that this guy was reselling firearms that he was purchasing and selling. That's not the point here. The point here, he clearly was not so much of a danger. They felt the need that they needed to lock this guy up. He was not going to be arrested during this raid. This was simply a search warrant to grab phones, safes, uh, paperwork, guns, things like that. Not an arrest warrant. This guy was not going to leave this home in handcuffs. I don't think he realized he was going to leave it in a body bag, but he was not. The intention was not for him to, to leave in the back of a squad car with handcuffs on. The other thing that I pointed out in my original video that shows the intent that they came here to murder this man was that on this affidavit, they say you are commanded to execute this warrant on or before March 20th, 2024, and they check in the daytime, 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. Again, these words in this phrase kind of work against each other when you're talking about the weekend after daylight savings time. You'll notice this is the picture during the raid. It is dark. It is not daytime. If you look at the times that they put, they're implying what when they check here in the daytime between 6 a.m. and 10 p.m. Well, obviously, 10 p.m., it's not really daytime either. But why would you say daytime if you were not intending these people to initiate the search warrant during daytime, meaning daylight hours? What's the point? The whole point is you don't want to catch them asleep. They're trying not to do that. The, quote, element of surprise is not necessarily what the warrant was giving them permission to do. Essentially, the warrant was saying, don't do this in the dead of night. That's why they specified this and checked this. Two videos have recently been released this week by Malinowski. That's the man who was murdered by his attorney. You'll notice in this first video, look at at least one of the vehicles kill their headlights as they go to this house. Meaning the element of surprise is what they were looking for. Now, granted, some of them kept their headlights on. We don't know if they turned them off past where this neighbor's nest camera or ring uh, doorbell camera caught this video, but at least one of them is seen killing its lights. Obviously, what? Element of surprise. Now, I want to also point out that they are trying to say that the guns he was reselling were used in the commission of a crime. The commission of the crime that they're actually speaking of is suspicion 
of marijuana, suspected marijuana. So when they pull these people over that they already assume are tied to Malinowski, they knew, know who they're pulling over, right? They had them targeted already. So they were pulling specific people over and saying, we think you have marijuana. Again, that's the crime. That is the crime that they're talking about. When they say we're using the commission of a crime, these people were charged with suspected marijuana, which is a crime. That is in the commission of a crime. That's how they're trying to paint this guy as selling guns to criminals, using these guns in the commission of a crime, and it's literally, looking at this page right here, three people who were suspected to have marijuana so what we know so far is that this guy was reselling pistols, mostly pistols, other guns as well, without having a dealer license. The ATF set him up. They got a warrant that was supposed to be administered during daytime hours. Let me get this right, between 6 a.m. and 10 p.m. But they wanted to have the element of surprise, so they did it right at the very beginning. This raid was done at 6 a.m., right? They didn't wait till 7 when it would have been daylight. This was 6 a.m. They showed up just in time to meet the requirements on this warrant. The question has always been, did these guys announce themselves? We have no body cam footage from the ATF or any of the other participating agencies that took place in this. Nothing else, although there is likely some. We're not going to see it yet. But you know what we do have? We do have some new video also from Malinowski's attorney that shows these guys coming up in full gear, full kit, everything. And guess what they did? They put a piece of tape over his ring doorbell camera. Why would you do that? If you weren't coming to arrest this guy, you clearly didn't feel like he was that big of a threat, right? I mean, honestly, they didn't. If they thought he was that big of a threat his name or he would have been checked off as being, you know, arrest this guy when you get there. That was not the intention. They had no intention of arresting him. I don't know if they knew he was going to die in the shootout, but clearly they had no intention of arresting the man. Why else would you hide his cameras and not let him see that? Unless you were going for the element of surprise, right? Why? I mean, if you thought the guy was a docile guy, enough so where you were not going to arrest him, wouldn't you let him see you through there and let you see the guys in full kit and maybe even talk to him through the ring doorbell? Hey, man, we're here to serve a search warrant. You know, there's a couple of ways you can handle this. You can come open the front door now if you want to, or we can kick it in. They didn't have that conversation because we know they didn't. They covered up the ring doorbell camera. They were hiding this guy, his eyes, from being able to see what they were doing. Now, why does this bother me so much? A couple of reasons. One is, remember I did a story a couple of days ago? I think it was of a lady in Philadelphia. There were three intruders breaking into her place, and her and her boyfriend came home, and she shot at three of them, killing one, wounding a second. How were these guys dressed? They were dressed in police uniforms. So you're telling me that now we have criminals who are dressing up like police officers and robbing people and breaking into places. So if I'm seeing this on the news and then I see this ring doorbell camera at my house where these guys are coming up like this, Granted, this guy probably knew, Malinowski, probably knew he was doing some things wrong, right? I'm being as honest as I possibly can here. But if he didn't know that he was on the radar of somebody and he has all these other guys that supposedly he knew who he was selling to that knew where he lived and what he had in his house, how did, would you not know if you had already seen some of these police reports or, excuse me, news reports of people dressed in police outfits robbing people who were actually criminals and not law enforcement, and you saw this at your front door, would you automatically assume that these were ATF agents? If these people kicked your door in and did not knock, did not ring the doorbell, you probably would automatically assume that they were criminals, right? And I'm not going to get into the argument that the ATF <laughs> are criminals anyway. I'm just saying, let's call them street criminals versus desk criminals, the ATF being the desk criminals. So why would you think any different here? Are we opening up a can of worms here 
by allowing these people to conduct these no-knock warrants while criminals are out there dressing up like cops breaking into other people's homes. Now, I want to show you this letter right here real quick. If you're starting to wonder, well, no-knock warrants, I mean, you can do that. It's no big deal. United States Department of the Interior, Office of the Secretary. This was issued in July of 2022. If you'll remember, this was the same year that the Breonna Taylor no-knock warrant took place where they murdered Breonna Taylor. Again, whole different set of circumstances. Nevertheless, a no-knock, somebody died. And she was not a guilty person. Again, there's questionable stuff in there, just like this guy. But she was not the, quote, hardened criminal that they were looking for, unquote. This got issued after that. Law Enforcement and Security Policy Bulletin. Knock and announce policy for execution of a warrant. Remember, the federal government was really mad that Breonna Taylor was killed. If you'll look here on this second page of this, law enforcement of the department, including federal task force officers, will limit the use of no-knock entries in connection with the execution of a warrant in the following ways. Now, remember, this is a federal document, and the ATF was involved in this raid on Mr. Melanowski's place in Little Rock. So these rules would have applied on this particular raid. The first bullet says, first, LEOs, may seek judicial authorization to conduct a no-knock entry only if that agent has reasonable grounds to believe at the time the warrant is sought that knocking and announcing the agent's presence would create an imminent threat. Remember that. Create an imminent threat of physical violence to the agent and or another person. Prior to seeking judicial authorization for a no-knock entry, an agent must first obtain approval from their first and second line supervisor and an assistant U.S. attorney in the relevant U.S. attorney's office. Once judicial authorization is obtained, agents may proceed without knocking and announcing their presence unless they learn of facts that negate the circumstance that justified this exception to the knock and announce rule. Now, I don't know, according to this first bullet point, I don't know if these guys got all of this clearance. If you'll notice, it states that they have to get judicial authorization for that. An agent must first obtain the approval, first and second line supervisor, and assistant U.S. attorney. I don't know if they got that. Again, I don't know enough to read into these arrest warrants and these affidavits to know if all these steps were followed. Personally, I doubt that they were because they're not calling this a no-knock raid. If you notice the second bullet down there, the second bullet is what I don't like, and this is why I don't like federal bureaucracies because they give them, basically they line everything out, technically speaking, and very by the book. And then they add something at the end and says, pretty much at your discretion. The bullet reads, second, if an agent did not anticipate the need for a no-knock entry at the time the warrant was sought, the agent may conduct a no-knock entry only if exigent circumstances arise at the scene, such that knocking and announcing the agent's presence would create an imminent threat of physical violence to the agent and or another person. If the agent relies on this exigent circumstances exception in executing the warrant, the agent shall immediately notify their chain of command and provide within notice to the relevant U.S. Attorney's Office. Again, not sure if any of those final steps took place, but clearly this is giving them the leverage and the latitude to execute a no-knock without actually going through the original steps under the first bullet. Again, that's why I don't like these bureaucracies. They always create a final, but if you want to do it your way, just do it your way. They always do that. So the whole point is there are steps outlined in this. And since this guy was no real flight risk and obviously was not a personal threat, I have my suspicions about this. They say an imminent threat to the agents or anybody around there. This guy could not have been an imminent threat if they weren't there to arrest him. Why would you leave an imminent threat there? Why would you just go there to initiate a search warrant whenever the imminent threat is still wandering around the house and you grab all his stuff and then you leave the imminent threat at the house? So clearly the guy was not an imminent threat. This was a no-knock that was administered without the approval they were supposed to get. That's why. Now, to further add to that, when are no-knocks used? 
Well, apparently no-knocks were originally expected to be used only in drug-related cases. In 1986, Congress passed the Anti-Drug Abuse Act, which established mandatory minimum prison sentences for certain drug offenses as part of the focus on drugs, federal and local law enforcement implemented militarized strategies that included no-knock raids. In other cases, police used a quick-knock approach before entering a location. The surprise nature of these raids is meant to help law enforcement disrupt criminal activity without giving a perpetrator time to react, either by using force against a police officer, evade arrest, or get rid of evidence. So these were not meant for these types of situations anyway. This is a guy who was, again, a very mild-mannered guy who was purchasing firearms and simply selling them, according to them, illegally to people as a straw purchase type situation. No drugs involved. Now, they may claim that the commission of the crimes that they were being used in were drug related because they suspected marijuana, but clearly this guy, Malinowski, was not associated with any kind of drug related crime. So there was, would have been no reason using these circumstances of the war against drugs type rules of a no-knock to be implemented in this type of case. Guys, I'm going to go back to what I said originally, that I feel like this is a Pandora's box that we're looking at here. This is the ATF creating a volatile situation by making a crime. In other words, old Gary down there bought a gun from Malinowski, who we suspect as reselling guns, right? We're going to pull Gary, we're going to tell Gary and pull him over at some point and just suspect marijuana use because we know we have the gun from Malinowski in his car. So they just created a used in the commission of a crime. That gives the White House and that gives all these politicians reasons to say Malinowski was a hardened criminal because he was selling guns to drug lords and people using them in the commission of a crime when they weren't. So they're creating a crime, then they create a dangerous situation where the person is not even expected to be arrested. They go there, administer a no-knock raid, so to speak, because they are not knocking. Why do you cover a Nest doorbell up unless you're trying to conceal the element of surprise? And if Malinowski had fired the first shot and was trying to murder them, then why wouldn't the ATF and all the other accompanying organizations be quick to release their own body cam footage to prove otherwise? No, Mr. Malinowski shot at us. Notice there's no other video being released, right? But I've got a serious problem with this because now that we are seeing more and more, and this is not the first case in Philadelphia where people dressed up like law enforcement officers to rob and commit crimes. But as we see an increase in that, more and more people are going to be a whole lot less concerned with what that person is wearing whenever they knock on your front door because they're going to remember these headlines of criminals dressing up like cops to break into your home and to rape, kill, and steal. One final point that I want to make is that these candy-ass federal agencies need to be really careful. First of all, I have a real problem with them dragging local agencies in with them because they're not giving these local agencies the full truth. The ATF, I guarantee you, did not brief the Little Rock Police Department the way they should have. They probably did not let them know how they were planning to administer this no-knock and that this guy truly was not a threat. If you had local guys in the Little Rock community, and I'm not saying that all law enforcement officers would be this uh, reasonable, but if you had local guys there and you told them that that's all this guy was doing was reselling firearms to people who are not committing crimes, who we just suspected for smoking a joint, right? And you let them know this guy is the director of the Little Rock Airport. Not saying that that makes him innocent. I'm just saying it's, the guy's got a legitimate job. If you told all these local law enforcement guys the absolute truth and then told them that we're going to go there under the cover of darkness, put tape over his ring doorbell, kick his door in and shoot him in the head, do you think they would have taken part in that? I would like to think as a human being that they would not have. But let me say one other thing. This was a bit of a softy, if you ask me, this, this guy with the Little Rock Airport. He was an easy target for these guys. Very easy for them to take him out, right? That guy was not a hardened guy. Didn't appear to be a guy that went to the range and you know had different types of training like many of you guys out there have. 
I'm curious of a couple of things and I want to state a point before I end the video. First of all, when you see guys coming up to your house and they put tape over your security system, what's your next move? And finally, let me tell you what I think the biggest danger is. If you go to the south or if you go to areas where there are some fervent Second Amendment people, some people like those of you watching and myself, if you go to those people's homes and you go sticking tape on their security cameras, I don't think the level four armor that you might have is gonna do you a whole lot of good. I think you are stepping in it. Let's remember, this guy was in Little Rock, Arkansas. That, yes, is the South, but they knew who this guy was. I would like to see these guys try putting tape over a camera at the end of somebody's quarter mile dirt driveway going to their house back in the woods. I'd like to see them do that. Try putting that tape over that camera and then take that little ride down that quarter mile shell or rock driveway. Roll up on their house quietly and start killing headlights. And let's see how that goes whenever you go there. I would be willing to bet that the moment you're putting tape on that particular camera, somebody's grabbing a heavier caliber firearm to meet you at the front door with. This is a bad situation. The ATF knows this, and the ATF is perpetrating this. They got blood on their hands, and Joe Biden has blood on his hands by trying to make people criminals that are doing stuff like what Malinowski did. God save the queen, man. I'm sorry, I thought this was America.